In this lesson, I'll try and give you a little extra insight into the concept of a radian. So when you start up your calculator, in most cases, it defaults to degree mode. And in that case, when you're entering values, you're entering values in degrees. So let's say you want to take the sine of 45 degrees. You would typically just enter in 45, like I'm doing with this calculator. And I take the sine of 45, and it returns 0 0.707. So if I draw a right triangle, that's the distance is this distance here up to 0 0.707 up in the y direction to this point. And if I was to take the cosine of 45 degrees, it would also be 0 0.707. And that is this distance along here in the x-axis, but it's really just this point. So it's the coordinate value is 0 0.707 comma 0 0.707 for both x and y. If I was to try a, another value, let's say I tried 30 degrees as my angle, and I took the sine of 30 degrees, the value would be 0 0.5 and I'll just draw that so the y value would be this distance here and the cosine I'm sorry the uh, cosine would be 0 0.866 which would be this distance along here so if in the in a similar way if we switch the calculator to radian mode let me clear this canvas real quick draw another grid and if I used 0.785 radians, you notice they these also increase in value as they go counterclockwise, 0, 0 0.785, 1.57 over to 3.14. Notice that's the location of pi. Pi is halfway around the circle. Hmm. And if you continue all the way around, it would be 2 pi, which really means 2 times the value of pi. So 2 times 3.14 is equal to 6.28, and that would be the value of 2 pi if you if you go all the way around the circle. But if we use this to say calculate the sine and the cosine in radian mode, I just enter in 0 0.785 for my angle, but it's in radians now instead of degrees. And if I take the sine, it's still 0 0.707. If I take the cosine, it's still 0 0.707. If I draw the right triangle, it's still the same right triangle. So we're really just using different values instead of degrees. So why do we need radians, right? because degrees are easier. Okay, well, there is a good reason. So let's take a little closer look over here. Let's have a few slides I've prepared. And let's just see where a radian, you know, comes from. Because that's kind of, it's kind of elusive. Okay, so, and here I have a unit circle. Here's my origin at zero, zero. It has a radius of one. And what I've blocked in here is a sector. And the angle that this makes with the x-axis here is 57 degrees, 57.3 degrees. But th the way I found this is by actually taking a line of the same distance, the same one unit, extended it vertically from this point, and if I was to lay this line along the edge of this circle here, what would happen is that would define one radian. So that's a unit of one radian. It's 57.3 degrees, and normally, you know, you find one radian, you convert to degrees, but that's really not what it's all about. It's really, it's this relationship between the radius of the circle and how it lays along the circle here. So let's take a look at another example. Well, we see that, but... So now we have one radian is this distance. If we take this same distance here and we map it across here, we'd be two radians, and three radians would be here, and right here would be a little more than three radians, and that would be 3.14 radians, which is pi, and that's where pi comes from. So if we continue to four radians, five radians, and all the way around here would be 6.2 radians, which would be all the way around the circle. All right, and that's why I have labeled here pi, and here's 2 pi. And the reason it's 2 pi is because it's literally just 2 times the value of pi. So 2 times 3.14 is 6.28. And then over here, we have 1.57 radians, which we call pi over 2. But really all this is saying is you take the value of pi, which is 3.14, and you divide it by 2. So 3.14 divided by 2 is equal to 1.57 radians at this location. But we call it pi over 2. And over here, it's 3 pi over 2, or 3 halves pi. But you can really think of it as 1 and a half pi, because that's what the improper fraction 3 halves is. So I'm just multiplying 3.14 times 1 and a half, and that equals 4.71 radians. And so that's where we get these kind of vague numbers, you know. But they are important. I'm going to show you why here in this 
next set of slides. All right, I don't know if you caught all that. Let me go back to the uh, beginning slide, and then we'll see. So in, in this case, I start again with a unit circle, and here's my one radian. I can't say distance, it's because it's not really a distance, because we're going to show you that in a second, but here's one radian. It's a dimensionless unit, and you're going to see here just one second why it is. Now, I've increased the units, the circle. It's no longer a unit circle. Now it has a radius of 1.1, .1. and if I was to take that same length line here and lay it across the circle, it, this would have, this actually would be a a distance of 1.1, .1, but yet it's still one radian. Okay, this just hang on. And in this case, 1.2. But let's think of this now instead of just a unit. Think of this as any kind of unit of measure you want to use, like say feet. So we'll call this 1.2 feet. And so this distance from here to here is 1.2 feet, but it's still just one radian because it's just this relationship between this line and this line laid upon the circle. But the distance is actually larger. You can see that because the smaller circle has a shorter distance and an even smaller circle has an even shorter distance. So the radian stays the same, but the distance actually gets bigger. So there is a formula for measuring the distance along the circle and it's this formula here. S is equal to R times theta. And the important thing here is that theta has to be an angle measured in radians, not degrees. Degrees do not apply. So, and you'll see why. If I was to sh use this as 1.3 feet, and that's my radius value, and I multiplied it by my radian measure of one radian, then my distance would be 1.3 feet along this circular sector but yet it's still only one radian. If I was to try and multiply this times 57.3 degrees, it simply would not make sense. So this always has to be in radians. And let's take a look at another slide, a couple more. Here's like say two radians. So my, my angle of measure is two radians between here and here, because there's one radian here. If we use the distance formula, say this is in meters. We'll go 1.2 meters for the radius times Theta, which is two radians, would be 2.4 meters. So two, it would be 2.4 meters in length around the circle to this location. So I hope give, that gives you a little bit of insight into a radian and why it's useful. In this case, we're required to use them, and they are required in many, many other applications. So degrees are good for some things, but radians are much more powerful. Okay, I'll catch you in the next lesson.